Hey, what's up, guys? Dope Center 930 here, and I'm just making this quick little uh, video tutorial tips and tricks type um, video um, because I had a request in my forums on uh, if I could make a video on how to basically use and solder on quick solder boards. Um, specifically, he asked for the reset glitch hack, but I do not have any. Um, any actual quick solder boards for the reset glitch hack. I just do direct wire. Um, but I mean, it's the same concept, and uh, I figured it's better than nothing. Uh, so, what I have here is both of the original Nandex uh, quick solder boards that I got probably, uh, what, seven, eight, nine, nine months ago? So, no, probably almost like 12 months now. I lose track of time. Um, and this was before I'd ever soldered, ever. I'd never touched a soldering iron. I bought the Nandex and um, decided to try out the soldering iron on my old rework station. And uh, as you can see, let me see how close I can get it. So, camera has horrible focus, you can't really see it. Um, but all of the pads are pretty much burnt up, brown, and completely disintegrated. Um, that was because I had no idea how to use quick solder pads or boards. Um, and to be honest with you, in my opinion, I don't feel like quick solder boards are necessarily any easier than direct um, direct wire soldering. But um, I'll show you on this one because this one's still fine and good. I'll show you how to do it and just little tips and tricks, okay? So let me go ahead and kind of zoom in. Bear with me because this camera does not like to zoom. Okay. And then, alright, so the first thing you're going to want to do is you are going to want to grab some flux and something to rub on with. I'm going to use my Lucky Flux Sock. So let's go ahead and get a good amount on it. Just go ahead and uh, for this point, it's the NAND point, so go ahead and dab a bit of, uh, bit, of, bit of flux around there. Rub it in nice and good. Okay. Don't overdo it though. I'm actually going to kind of get rid of a little bit so that the actual pad from the bottom of the quick solder board will stick on. Um, it's much easier when you do have these stickies on the bottom. Definitely a big thumbs up to Team Executor because um, if you don't, it's just a lot more difficult to get it all straight and aligned. So next you're going to go ahead and remove, if I can get it. There you go, remove the white um, adhesive stuff on the bottom and you want to line it up directly on top of where you're going to be uh, soldering. So you can go ahead and get it right on top. Make sure you have all the holes lined up, not just a couple. So otherwise it's going to be a lot harder once it's stuck down. And then once you get it and you're happy with the way it is, push down really hard. And hold it down. I mean, not so hard you're going to break the board or anything like that, but you know, don't, don't be afraid to push down hard so that everything Get stuck on there nice. Also, on um, let's say, let's say certain times when you solder um, wires or whatever, it's quick solder boards to the NAND holes, there's not going to be any solder inside of there. And if that's the case, right now after you put the flux on, you're going to want to go ahead and um, apply a little bit of solder to the holes so that it's even, but because I've actually read the NAND off this board before to see if it was J-taggable, um, I already had solder in the holes, and you don't want to overdo the solder that's already on the board because when you put the, the actual quick solder board on, it won't sit nicely, it'll be all uneven, and you won't be able to get it right, so you want to make sure that you don't overdo the solder that's already on the board um, before. Uh, placing the quick solder boards on. So next, you don't necessarily have to do this. Usually, quick solder boards um, are pretty good at grabbing the uh, solder, but you can go ahead and put just a tiny little dab of solder onto the points. Just rub it around. All right, and then you want to get your soldering iron, which hopefully you keep somewhat clean, which I am terrible at, so let me go ahead and clean it off. Go ahead and uh, tin the wire. Don't want to put too much solder on there because uh, otherwise you might hit the other point next to it. 
And then you just want to go ahead and there's a couple ways you can actually do it. If you have thick solder like this right here, you're not going to be able to do it this way. Um, you're going to have to actually just put a dab on the tip of your iron and kind of dab the points um, in between where the quick solder board's contact point is and the point on the board. But if you have, if you actually have really thin solder like this, one technique that I learned with quick solder boards is that you can kind of, if you go at an angle correctly, you can place the actual solder, place the actual solder so it's touching both the point on the quick solder, uh, the quick solder board, the QSBs, as well as onto the motherboard. And then when you use your iron, it'll actually melt the solder and connect both the points very nicely. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Almost there. It does take a good amount of solder to actually get um, the two points to connect. So let me go a little bit more. And there we go, I have a solid connection on the first point. I'm just going to go ahead and keep doing the same thing, just um, like I said, depending on what method you want to do it, it's probably easier to not put the iron directly on the on the pads because it's a lot easier to actually fry the pads. Um, so if you do have really thin solder like this, I definitely recommend this method. Just kind of, like I said, angle it so that you're touching both the point on the board and the point on the quick solder board. Place the iron above and it'll just flow nicely. So let me go ahead and... Sorry if my head's in the way. It's kind of hard to stay back when you're soldering. Almost got the second point. me personally though I like I said I always prefer just strictly wire method I think it's a lot easier to solder a wire to a point than a quick solder boards all right so I got the second one I'm gonna clean off the tip of my iron put a bit more a uh, bit more solder in the iron And the thing I think with soldering too, um, yeah, I know that there's a lot of like right the right ways technically people would say to do it, but um, when you solder over time, I think you'll kind of pick up your own like methods of soldering, what works for you, little tips and tricks and stuff like that. So this is just kind of what works for me. Is it necessarily what a professional is gonna say is the right way to solder? No, I probably not. But um, it's just what's worked for me, so I don't, I don't see any point in changing the way I solder since it's worked for me in the past and it continues to work for me so see so yeah, I don't know how well you're gonna be able to see but these uh three points right here are connected so all right well that's about it guys just wanted to give you guys a brief little um, brief little not necessarily tutorial but just a segment showing you basics on how to use quick solder uh, solder boards and stuff like that so 
Alright, well, hopefully uh, you got something from this video, and if it was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm out.